For which system of inequalities is negative 3, 1 a solution? Now, what I've done is I've taken each one of these and rearranged them to y is less than or equal to something. Here, the top one, if I subtract x on both sides, that's just going to be y is less than negative x minus 2. Here I go through the motions. You see, if I set all of these equal to y, this is what they work out to be. Now, here's the key. If I were to punch all of these into my calculator, they all four produce a similar graph. All four of them. And let me just show you. Let me just put one of them in. Y equals negative X minus 2. And less than 2 thirds X, 2 thirds X plus 3. Okay. Now that's what they are without the shadings. Let me go ahead and place the shadings in here. Okay. So if I go back and on this calculator, if I want to make it shadings, I'm going to make it, since it's less than, I'm going to shade less than, less than here, hit OK. Then here, I'm going to make it greater than, come down, greater than, OK. Now when we graph them, OK, so there's our first one, y is less than negative x minus 2. And then the next one is y is greater than 2 thirds x plus 3. Now, each of these four categories all produce that similar graph. But the only answer that could be correct is D. Why do I say that? Because the graph does right there, that intersection point, negative 3 comma 1, it can only be a solution if that point is included. If it's less than or greater than, the point cannot be concluded or included, I should say. Here with D, you see with both of them, it's less than or equal to, less than or equal to. Okay, so the point can be included because equals to. So that means if it's equals to, it can be included in the point. So D is the only one that makes sense here. Okay. Now, let's move on. What is the solution to this system of equations? Okay, so I've rewritten it here. 2x plus 4y equals 22. 7x plus y equals 12. So, what we need to do, one of the methods that you can use is to make one, either the x or the y to match as one positive and one negative so that you can subtract them. Now, what if I took this second equation here and multiplied it by negative 4? I do that for a particular reason, because when I do that, my original equation is going to remain 2x plus 4y equals 22. However, my second equation will turn to negative 28x minus 4y equals negative 48. Now, you'll notice that now I have a positive 4y and a negative 4y. What I'm doing is using the elimination method for solving systems of equations. You eliminate one of the variables, either the x or the y, solve for the remaining variable. Once you have that answer, plug it into one of the original equations, and then you have your other answer. So now, if I add these two together, 2x minus 28x is minus 26x. Positive 4y, negative 4y cancel each other out. 22 minus 48 is negative 26. So what I have here is a negative 26x equals negative 26. And if I divide by negative 26 on both sides, well, x is just 1. So now I know what my x is. So now I'm going to plug in what I know for x into one of the equations and then solve for my y. So if I take the first equation, 2, and then substitute the 1 in for the x, plus 4y equals 22. 2 times 1 is just 2. 
2 plus 4y equals 22. I divide by, uh, excuse me, I subtract 2, both sides of the equation, I get 4y equals 20, divide by 4, both sides, y equals 5. So my x equals 1, my y equals 5, and that's choice C right here. Okay? Let's go on to number 16. Click on the grid to plot each of the solutions. You must plot all solutions. Now remember, whenever they're asking you for roots, solutions, x-intercepts, zeros, they all mean the same thing. Where does the function touch the x-axis? That's what they're talking about. Now, the graph of negative xy squared minus 2x plus 8 is shown. On the grid, identify the solutions where negative x squared minus 2x plus 8 equals 0. Well, they equal 0 here and here, where they touch. Here, it's negative 4, 0, and positive 2, 0. So you would just click and put a dot on negative 4, 0, click and put a dot on 2, 0, and you're done. That's all it is. All right? Let's go on. Question 17. What value of x makes this equation true? 3x minus 20 equals negative 2x. So I've rewritten the equation here. All I do is subtract 3x both sides of the equation. This would give me negative 20 equals negative 5x because negative 2x minus 3x is negative 5x. Then I would divide both sides by negative 5 to get the x by itself. So negative 20 divided by negative 5 is positive 4. So x equals positive 4. That's choice C right here. Okay, easy peasy. Let's move on. Number 18. Which equation best represents line M? So we have line M here. You can graph or count the slope by hand. Now, if you graph it, I went ahead and graphed it. I put in y equals one-third x minus four, and it produces this graph here. And out of the answer choices, C is the one that produces this graph. But let's say by hand, you were looking at this here. Well, we know that the y-intercept is negative 4. Each one of these answers have negative 4, so we need to dig a little further here. Now, I would count the points. You see I put dots wherever the particular graph intersects one of the boxes here. So from the intercept, if I go up 1 and then over 3, I get to an intersection. If I go up 1 over 3, I get to another intersection. From down here, I go up 1 over 3 here, up 1 over 3 here. So the slope is going to be positive 1 third, 1 third x minus 4. Answer choice C. Again, by either putting these four into the graph and the calculator and graphing it, or counting by hand, you can get the answer. So choice C is our answer. Let's move on to 19. Okay, directions. Click and drag the answers to the correct boxes. Christopher incorrectly solved an inequality is shown. So these are all of his steps. Between which two consecutive steps did Christopher make a mistake? All right, step one, negative four times x minus seven plus one is less than or equal to negative three. Okay, no problem there. Let's see step two, negative four times x minus seven equals negative four, because all he did was just subtract one on both sides. There's no problem there. Let's look at step three, negative four x plus 28 less than or equal to negative four. All he did was distribute the negative four to the parentheses and got negative four x plus 28. There's no problem there. Let's see here, negative four x less than or equal to negative 32. All he did was just subtract 28 on both sides. There's no problem there. Step five, x less than or equal to eight. So here's where the problem occurs in step five because Christopher divided by a negative number. And whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, you always flip the inequality sign when you multiply or divide by a negative number. So step five should have been x is greater than or equal to eight, not x is less than. So the mistake occurred between step four and step five. So you would click in step four, 
drag it there, click on step five, grab it there. Boom, you're done. Let's go on to question 20. Solve for n. 3n minus 7 over 6 equals 2n plus 5 over 3. Here we have a fraction equaling another fraction. Whenever you have a fraction equaling another fraction, one of the easiest ways to solve is just cross multiply. Multiply this by this, multiply this by this. So what I've done here, I've rewritten the fraction, but then I've taken the 3 times 3n minus 7 equals 6 times 2n plus 5. Cross multiply. Now I'm going to distribute the 3 here to the parentheses. So that's going to be 9n minus 21 equals 12n plus 30. If I add 21 to both sides, subtract 12n on both sides, I get a negative 3n equals 51. And then if I divide by negative 3 both sides, n is negative 17. That's what you would place inside the box, negative 17. Okay, so far these are pretty simple. Let's move on to question 21. What values of x are solutions to 3x squared plus 11x equals 20? So here I've rewritten the uh, original equation. What I'm going to do is set this equation equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 20 on both sides. I get 3x squared plus 11x minus 20 equals 0. Now, this is a trinomial which needs to be factored. I didn't write the factors here, but you can do that on your own. So the factors for here and here are going to be factors of that 3x squared. The factors of 3 are just simply 3 and 1. So the x and the 3x would be the factors here. Factors of this negative 20 would be here and here. Factors of 20, 20 and 1, 10 and 2, 5 and 4. It's going to be a combination of one of those pairs. So I picked out the 5 and the 4. Now to check it, all we need to do is just FOIL it and double check to see. x times 3x gives you 3x squared. x times negative 4 gives you a negative 4x. 5 times 3x is a positive 15x. 15x minus 4x is a positive 11x. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. So this does check out. So the factors uh, x plus 5 times 3x plus 4 equals 0. So we set them both equal to 0. x plus 5 equals 0, where well, x is just negative 5 there. 3x minus 4 equals 0. Well, if I add 4 to both sides, that's going to give me 3x equals 4. If I divide by 3 both sides, x equals 4 thirds. So I get negative 5 and I get 4 thirds. And the one that matches is answer choice D. Okay? Now, let's move on to question 22. It says the graph of line L is shown. Which number is closest in value to the slope? Well, easiest thing, or one of the easiest ways we can find this, take the y-intercept here, take the x-intercept here, count them, and then we can find the slope. So from the y-intercept and from the x-intercept, I'm going to go down 1, and I'm going to run 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's negative 1, positive 6. Negative 1, 6, which is answer choice B right here. That's easy. Just count the slope. That's easy. Use the intercepts. Count it. Okay? Let's go on to question 23. Based on the transitive property, complete this statement. If 2 times y minus 3 is greater than or equal to 3x minus 4, and 3x minus 4 is greater than 6 minus y, then 2 times y minus 3 is greater than or equal to what? Well, transitive property. Well, what is the transitive property of equality? The transitive property states that if A is equal to B and if B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. Now, that's the equality. In this case, we have an inequality, so it would just be if A is greater than B and B is greater than C, then A is greater than C. So we just need to identify the points which are A, B, and C. So rewriting this original statement, if 
2 times y minus 3. That's our a. Is greater than or equal to 3x minus 4. That's our b. So if a is greater than b, and then our b, 3x minus 4, is greater than or equal to 6 minus y, that's our c, then a is going to be greater than c. So our 2 times y minus 3 is greater than or equal to 6 minus y. If A is greater than B, B is greater than C, then A is greater than C. So 6 minus Y is the answer choice that you will place in. Okay? Let's continue. This system of linear equations is graphed as shown. 3X plus Y equals 2. X plus 3Y equals negative 18. So they already have it graphed. Now it's asking, what is the solution to this system of equations? Well, anytime you look at the graph and you see that the lines intersect, wherever they intersect is going to be the solution, okay? And they intersect right here when x is 3 and y is negative 7. So 3, negative 7 is going to be our solution, which is answer choice B, which we've marked here. Okay, on to question 25. Renee is going bowling. The cost per game is $2.50. Renee will need to rent a pair of bowling shoes for $1.50. She can spend up $16 to bowl and rent a pair of shoes. What is the maximum number of games that Renee can bowl? So we can set up an inequality to figure out what is the maximum number of games she can bowl. So, it says the cost per game is 250. So we can set that as 250 per game. 250 G here, right? Renee will need to rent a pair of bowling shoes for 150. So 250 a game plus a dollar fifty. And then the maximum she can spend is sixteen dollars, because it says what's the maximum number of games. So she has sixteen dollars here. So if we subtract a dollar fifty on both sides, we're gonna get two fifty a game is gonna be less than or equal to. 14.50 because that's just the bowling shoe amount that we've subtracted. So now 250 a game less than or equal to 14.50. If we divide by 250 on both sides, so the maximum games she can play is 5.8. Well, you can't play 0.8 of a game. So the maximum is going to be five games, which is answer choice B, which we have selected here. Okay. Let's go on to question 26. Okay, let's continue on. So, question 26. Malik can spend no more than $24 to buy pecans and cashews. He will pay $6 per pound for pecans and $8 per pound for cashews. Which graph best represents the number of pounds of pecans and the number of pounds of cashews Malik can buy? So, He's got $24, no more than $24. So $6 a pound for pecans and uh, is equal or less than 24. So if we divide by six, so that means the maximum amount of pecans a pound, he can buy is four pounds. It's $8 a pound for cashews and he's got $24. If we divide by eight here, the maximum pounds of cashews he can buy is three pounds. So anything up to three pounds for cashews, anything up to four pounds for pecans. Now, if we look at each of these particular graphs, choice D is what we will want because it shows up to here, we can buy up to four pounds because if he buys four pounds of pecans, he can buy zero pounds of cashews. Here, if he buys three pounds of cashews, he can buy zero pounds of pecans or any combination in between here he can buy. Okay, so choice D is our answer because it has up to four pounds of pecans, up to three pounds of cashews, and that's what we want. Okay, so let's look at number 27. 